Welcome to Citizen Talk, the show that's restoring prudence to politics. I'm Juan Davalos. And I'm Lynette Grunvig, and you are listening to us on Radio Free Hillsdale, 101.7 FM. Or you can also listen to us on SoundCloud or iTunes. Just search one word, Citizen Talk, and now on YouTube, too. We are currently recording video as well as audio. And we are, uh, obviously, we are not in our usual format right now because... <laughs> we're all under self-quarantine. And there's a lot of fear about what's going on in the country. There's a lot of concern. Uh, a lot of people are in their homes. And, you know, when you're stuck at home for a long period of time, you start getting antsy. You don't know what's going on. There's a lot of stories of what's going on, but not a lot of accurate uh, info. Well, there's a lot of disinformation, I guess. Yes. Um, yeah. So so today we're very fortunate to have uh, somebody that has... Um, I guess fortunate for us that somebody that has gone through this and has experienced uh, coronavirus uh, herself, uh, and she's been very gracious to allow us to to talk to her and ask her about her experience, uh, so that we can learn from it and and be a mm -hmm. little bit uh, more informed about it. Um, so Anna, wel welcome to our show. Thank you. Um, so Anna, what? We were hoping if you could start by telling us, uh, well, I guess a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, um, and if you can give us an age range, if you don't want to tell us exactly how old you are, just because it is uh, relevant information for the virus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, well, I am um, in the age range of 30 to 40. I'm 38. And um, my family, I have four children, ages nine to one and a half. And my husband is retired army. He just retired oh, wow. last year um, after 23 years of service. And we um, are settling into civilian life. So um, is there anything else you wanted to know? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, where, where are you from? Um, it's kind of a complicated question. Um, my, <laughs> I grew up as a missionary kid. And so originally I was from Ohio. But then um, my family moved to West Africa when I was eight, and we lived there until I was 17. And then I came back to the States. So originally Ohio. Okay, and is that where you are right now, in living in Ohio? Oh, no. I'm in New Jersey right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay. And uh, so tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about how this all started. How, when did you start? Um, feeling maybe maybe any did you feel any symptoms uh what symptoms you started feeling and when did it started happening um i was traveling i um had gone to a conference in dallas um oh. and i flew um through newark airport thursday march 12th <clears throat> in the morning and went down to a conference in dallas that was probably over 500 people and then flew home on sunday and I started feeling symptoms Saturday, I would say, but I didn't realize um, that I was having symptoms. And well, what, yeah. sorry, go ahead, Lynette. Oh, no, I was just wondering, what were those early symptoms? Because I think the hard part about this is a lot of the early symptoms, especially, could very easily be something else, allergies, colds, flu, and yeah. so it can be hard. It's hard to know. <laughs> yes. Um, Friday evening, I had a headache, but I had been traveling and I thought, I'm just not drinking enough water. So I took um, an ibuprofen and that kind of went away. And then Saturday during the day, I felt slightly nauseous. Um, we were out and about traveling. I thought maybe I'm car sick. Um, and then I had some gastrointestinal symptoms that evening, but we had eaten at a Korean restaurant that day. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm eating different places. No big deal. Right. And then yeah. on the way home in the airplane, I felt, um, my skin just felt very tender is the mm -hmm. only way to describe it. Um, and I was tired, but I had gotten up at 4 a.m. to make my flight. So I thought, you know, it could be anything. Yeah. So, so it sounds like the symptoms for you, at least, uh, they started pretty quickly. Yes. Um, it, it seems like the only place I could have gotten it would have been that or a Bible study the previous that mm. Wednesday um, and so it seems Newark Airport would have been a more likely place for me to have in con come in contact with it um, but yes it, the symptoms came on fairly quickly if that's where I got it. Wow. 
now typically it's uh, described that um, a lot of problem breathing, um, because I guess it, it sometimes leads to pneumonia. Uh, do you think it, it led to that eventually? I did not have pneumonia, no, okay. but okay. I had several days, um, probably days four through eight were my hardest days. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a lot of sinus pressure, a lot of nasal drainage, mm -hmm. coughing, um, some shortness of breath, which could have been due to congestion, I'm not sure, and extremely tired and achy with fever. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so that's the big thing I keep hearing from people is that they just feel tremendously tired. Some people have said they felt more tired than they ever have in their life. Did you, is that, did you feel like that was a very distinctive symptom of this illness? Yeah, so I felt like my body, the weight of it is on your body to fight it. Wow. You know, you're, you don't have any help from anything to fight it. And so, yes. Wow. And at what point when you started feeling bad, did you say, okay, I think I need to go to the doctor. I, I think I need to um, check what's going on. And, and how did that go about? Um, by, so, so I got home Sunday evening. I felt like I had a slight fever, so I took my temperature. And then um, I went to bed as normal. You know, we didn't quarantine or anything. And then that, that night I woke up around 4 a.m. and I just felt this sense of something's wrong and I need to not be with anybody. So we actually went mm -hmm. and quarantined me on Monday morning and um, I didn't see the kids or Eric anymore since then. But then on, by Tuesday, I called the ER and they weren't testing anyone. My symptoms weren't bad enough. And they just said, just stay home, just quarantine. But then by Tuesday, um, I was having more fever and I was able to get into an urgent care place. So I drove uh -huh. myself there we had some masks from construction in our basement and I uh, just drove myself there and um, they saw me and tested me. Wow. Well, and, and how long did, uh, did it take for you to, to get the test results back after you got tested? Um, it took two days. Okay. And, and you were isolated during those two days, I'm guessing? Yes, I've been isolated um, for almost two weeks now. Wow. Uh, this this might feel like a weird question. Did you feel relieved when you got the results back, or or did um, was it did it make it more scary? Um, I felt relieved to know um, they had told me it could be flu or coronavirus, and the flu results came back negative the day before the coronavirus came back positive. So I kind of had an inkling that that's what it was, um, but it certainly did help us in in knowing steps forward to know for sure. Yeah. Did you have difficulty getting the test? Because of course, that's a lot of what we're hearing about is how hard it is to just get tested for this. Yeah. Um, I, they, I was surprised that when I went to the urgent care, I didn't, they just tested me. That, that okay. Was mm. Wow. Okay. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, after you got tested, do you feel like, uh, well, first of all, did they, uh, did they prescribe any medicine for you or did they just say basically, um, I know we've been hearing a lot about um, in the news, hydroxychloroquine and did, did, uh, did they give you any of these medicines or did they give you something else? No. Um, so when I, when I was tested, they said it could be flu, it could be coronavirus. So we're going to give you the flu medication, kind of like mm. or whatever. Um, so I drove to the CVS and went through the drive through with my mask on and my <laughs> <laughs> feel like, you know, you're in some movie or something. Yeah. And, um, I, I got my Tamiflu meds and they said, start those right away. Cause you have to start them within a certain window of symptoms. So I started those, but then when the flu test came back negative, they said, discontinue those. And there were no meds offered except Tylenol. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of scary, honestly. <laughs> And then how did you feel, um, um, I guess, what, what was the, from when it started, when did you, when would you say was the worst, like the worst time, how many days afterwards? The worst days were probably days four through seven. Mm. And what were the, what were those symptoms like? Um, I couldn't sleep at night because of the coughing. 
Um, I was kind of scared to lay down because the coughing got worse every time I laid down. Mm -hmm. um, so I would get like three hours of sleep a night. And um, there was just a lot of tremendous um, sinus pressure and nasal drainage, which then made my throat um, just feel like swollen almost. Like it was just a very full feeling. Yeah. Um, and I think I was just worried personally that it was gonna, then my lungs were gonna be compromised, you right. know, so. In, in um, how did, uh, when did you know that you started, uh, you know, making the turn for, for the better? How, how did that start happening? Um, probably on day eight, day seven or eight, I woke up and um, I realized that, uh, sorry, this is like, no, <laughs> <in my eye. laughs> um, the mucus that I was going on, and I was, you know, how, like when you have a sinus infection, it can get like dark yellow. Yeah. Um, clear. And so I thought, okay, that's a good sign. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And the coughing started to lessen. So that was my first. And, and when the fever, you know, honestly, a lot of people are saying this whole fever thing, but I did not have a high fever. My highest fever was 100.1. Oh, and Tylenol took it right down. Mm. And um, then I had, you know, slightly elevated temps. And I think I normally have a lower temp anyway, but um, the fever was not a big thing for me during. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that your normal temperature might vary from person to person. I think mm -hmm. mine is also lower. I think mine is like 97.8 or something like that, which is a little lower than normal. It might be a good time for people, honestly, to just go take their temp if they're healthy. Yeah. And maybe they have a gauge. Yeah, that is a good yeah. idea to know what your temperature is. Yeah, that's good advice. I'm wondering, do you have any other advice for people? <laughs> um, <laughs> just in general, as you've experienced this, I guess. <laughs> Um, well, practically speaking, um, please stay inside if you can, um, not just for yourselves, but for other people who are vulnerable during this time, um, just because we can't see the germs doesn't mean that they're not in the air. I, when I was on the airplane, I carried Clorox wipes with me, I had hand sanitizer, I washed my hands at every turn, both my parents are physicians, mm -hmm. I grew up in a very clean home. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, like, I, I'm just saying, like, I did everything I should, but I could have just walked into a bathroom stall and breathed the air of someone who had been there three hours before me. Mm. So um, just to really, the best way to fight this is to stay home unless you have to go out. Right. Uh, have any of your family members shown any symptoms at all? Um, it's so hard to tell, right? Um, my... Uh, a, d a day and a half after I got home, my youngest, my one and a half year old had a runny nose and pink eye symptoms. Mm. And she had been at a birthday party the Saturday before and the kids had had colds. So mm -hmm. my husband and I were like, we don't know. And then two days later, two of my other kids got sore throats. Um, and then a day later, one of them from that sore throat developed a double ear infection and had to be taken to the doctor and got antibiotics. Um, but thankfully everyone seems to be on the men now and doing fine and symptoms were controlled by Tylenol. And, you know, the doctor told us that he thought, oh, you know, when my husband, my husband took my son in and said, you know, could this be COVID? And, you know, they're wearing masks and they're like, you know, like, and, uh, and the doctor said, well, if this is COVID, it's the first time it's presented that way. Mm. But, you know, um, usually bacterial infections follow viral infections. Right. So um, it, it, we're treating it like it could have been. We're having a lot, you know, my husband has a bucket of bleach water that we're bleaching everything in and cleaning things and yeah. Right. Um, I, think, I think that's all the questions that I had. Lynette, did you have any other questions? Um, yeah, I was just curious. So you've been quarantined for two weeks. Um, do they have a, I know we're all probably at a stay at home or stay in place order right now, but outside of that, do they have a time schedule for you at, when you're quarantined? Um, yeah. Before um, you're, 
Yeah. Good question. Um, there's very little research right now. Um, and so that what the nurse at um, the hospital has told me is if you are symptom free after seven days and have not had a fever for 72 hours, then you should be okay. Okay. But I want to qualify that with there's no research hmm. to support that at this point. Um, and I know we're hearing a lot of things on the news. Um, my husband and I, for our personal choice, are choosing to extend that quarantine longer because I still have some symptoms and um, we feel that we don't want to be foolish about it. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I guess I actually do have another question. Um, I know I know you're um, from our emailing back and forward. Um, you you are a Christian, and so I am curious to know um, about you know your your relationship with God and all during this time. Yes, um, <clears throat> God has definitely. I have not been alone in isolation. And um, I have felt him here with me every step of the way. Um, some of the most helpful things have been uh, listening to Christian music and um, reading the Psalms during this time. And I really was just pondering um, God's sovereignty in it. Um, I had a friend who was on the trip with me. We shared a hotel room. I gave her a hug goodbye. And she reported minor body aches. and. They went away in a day and she's fine. And I just thought to myself, you know, God knew the moment that that encountered that virus particle and he allowed it. And it was for my good and for my family's good. And, um, you know, that doesn't always feel comforting when you're not in something hard to think that way. But when you're in the middle of it, it's, it's a very comforting realization to know that you're still in his hand and it's still for your good. Yeah, thank you. That's actually, I think that's really helpful for people. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Anna Kobart, thank you so much for, for being a part of um, Citizen Talk today and, and sharing a little bit of your, of your experience with us. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank so you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, you've been listening to Citizen Talk, the show that's restoring prudence to politics. I'm Juan Davalos. And I'm Lynette Grenvig, and this is once again Radio Free Hillsdale 11.7 FM, where you can hear our podcast on SoundCloud or iTunes. Just search one word Citizen Talk.